Welcome back to the channel, guys. It's just me today, unfortunately. My partner in crime couldn't be here today to review this paper with me. Now, I'm going to be reviewing paper number three from the GCSE Maths Exams 2023. I'm going to be looking at the difficulty of paper three. I'm going to be looking at potential areas that some students may have found challenging or difficult. And I'm going to also be looking at the potential grade boundaries, which I've done a video for before, but if anything, changes based on what we've seen today in paper three and we will also be asking the question whether or not the ease of these exams potentially show the original intention of the government when they first came to the new spec to go to a GCSE grade five as the benchmark pass grade that's what we're going to be looking at so let's start off with the student feedback now I've asked so many students you know, everyone that came out of the exam hall that I encountered, they all said to me that it was the best paper that they've done. They were beaming from ear to ear with the mass, you know, amazing smiles. Okay. They said that if anything, paper one was the most difficult, which we already have discussed wasn't that bad. It was quite reasonable. They said that paper three was very maths like. And I asked them, what do you mean by that? They said it means it was a straightforward. It was like the textbook questions that we have been doing over the years. You know, the kind of questions that we have seen uh, our teachers give us on exam papers, on practice exam papers, so on and so forth. They did mention, however, the, the, that the last question, which was, if I have a quick look at it, it was the uh, ratio with algebra question, that that was the most challenging, if any. And I also highlighted uh, there was a vector question, column vectors, that some students may have found that uh, showing that something's parallel, they may not understand how to use, uh, you know, the k value or the, uh, you know, the, uh, the unknown term to show something is parallel. That might have been quite challenging, but overall, it was an amazing paper. And I'm sure that the majority of you out there were coming out the exam hall feeling the same way and, you know, the boost that you have. So we should be looking forward to some amazing results from you guys. Now, what would all of this mean for the grade boundaries? Well, naturally, as you know, if everyone in the country has done really well on this paper, then it would mean that the grade boundaries will increase. And this goes down to the government wanting to take back the grade boundaries to pre-2019, before the whole lockdown thing and everything else, to those sort of levels, which were obviously higher because in the past uh, few years, you know, you've had teacher assessments and you know, grades ha have actually seen an increase, okay? So that's one indication. The second indication, as I was mentioned in the introduction, is that the government potentially may be moving very quickly towards using grade five as the GCSE pass rate. Because as you know, when they first came out with these, um, the new spec, the government wanted grade five to be the pass mark. But because the first year's paper, which I believe was in 2017, was, or, or, I can't remember off the top of my head, but whenever it was, um, the, 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 the nature of the questions were very different to the old spec style. Uh, they had to sort of say, you know what, we'll keep grade four as a pass rate and over time we'll move on. But then obviously what happened in the world affected everything and slowed everything down. So could this be an indication for future people that grade five could be the pass rate and this is what we are moving towards. So this is what I feel. Now, as for the pass rate, I think we'll have, we'll see many, many uh, amazing results this year. And, you know, we, what did we say? So just to give you an example, you, you know, do refer to the GCSE grade boundaries video that we did do for this year for more specific things. You can look at it on the table, but we, for, let's take a grade as an example. We said that grade eight, around averaging around 55 marks on each paper, uh, which was around 69%, 70%, let's say. That's what a grade eight currently is. I would say, guys, just to be safe, aim for, I mean, around 75%. Okay, it could be even higher. I mean, traditionally in the past, uh, before this whole new spec, grade eight was around 80% above, above 80%. And the grade nines was in the region of 90% and above. Okay, so this is something that you know we've always sort of had as an objective and this is what we in fact grade nine there was no grade nine but it was we're talking about grade a star was 90 percent and above all right so this is why this is what i feel that the government may be moving towards let me know what you think i would love to hear how you found the exam whether any questions gave you you know threw you off because 
when I look through this paper, and I do put on my student hat, guys, when I do this, because it's not fair when we as teachers who are experienced, who are doing maths day in and day out, are coming and saying, oh, this is an easy paper. This question is easy. You should know this. You should know this. That's not what we do, because that's what we do as teachers. We have to step into the, the, the shoe of a, a different types of learners, different types of learners. Okay. And in fact, I had one set four student. So that's the you know, borderline student come up to me and they said, you know what, I enjoyed the paper. And I remember previously uh, when we've done mock exams, they've said, ah, oh, it was a hard paper, it was a hard paper. When it wasn't really for me, okay, obviously I'm a math teacher, but for them it was. So let me know in the comments what you guys think about this paper. I would love to hear from you. And until the next one, bye for now.